On this planet, there are plenty of animals that are known for being picky eaters. Even though I've probably put this term in the title and the thumbnail, it doesn't really make sense when it's applied to animals. Unlike humans, for most animals it's a struggle to survive, and if they aren't taken out by predators or by the elements, it can be a real struggle to find shelter and to find food. Most animals don't have the option to be a picky eater, as they simply must consume most of the food that they come across. Despite this, there are some animals that only feed on a particular type of food. But this is not down to being picky, it's down to evolution. Some animals are specially adapted to only feed on one type of food, and other animals are only able to digest certain plants. In this video, I will be taking a look at the bird world, and I will be focusing on birds that mostly feed on one type of food, as I will be going through four birds that are notoriously picky eaters. And for our first species, we will be heading over to the wetlands of the Americas, as our first bird is the snail kite. The snail kite is a bird of prey that's in the same family as eagles, hawks, and old world vultures. These birds are relatively large, and they have a maximum wingspan of around 1.2 meters. These birds do exhibit some sexual dimorphism, as males are usually a grey colour with red eyes, and females are more of a dull brown colour. If you happen to be in South America, you might be able to find this bird's doppelganger. Unsurprisingly, this doppelganger is its closest relative, and goes by the name of the slender billed kite. This bird lives a very similar life to the snail kite, and of course almost looks exactly the same. The easiest way to tell these two species apart is by looking into their eyes, as the male snail kites have red eyes, and male slender billed kites have yellow eyes. This bird can be found in American wetlands from Florida to South America, and in these wetlands is where it will find its food. Although this bird will sometimes feed on crustaceans and small fish, as you might be able to guess by its name, it does like eating snails. Its diet consists almost exclusively of apple snails, and it has a few adaptations that help it tackle these mollusks. As you might be able to tell, it has quite a strange beak, and this beak helps it to extract snails from their shells. Although this bird's relationship with apple snails is quite interesting, it also makes them quite vulnerable. Because these birds depend on the apple snails so heavily, if the apple snails number numbers were to decrease, this would also mean that the snail kite numbers would decrease. This is exactly what's been happening in recent years, as pollution and invasive species have had a massive negative effect on the apple snail numbers. So even though this bird's diet is very interesting, it also makes them very vulnerable. But for our next species, we can head to pretty much anywhere around the world, as the next bird we will be taking a look at is the osprey. The osprey is a very large bird of prey with a maximum wingspan of around 1.8 meters. It tolerates a wide variety of habitats, but these habitats must be near a body of water. Its adaptability has made it the second most widely distributed raptor, and it's second only to the peregrine falcon. These birds can be found in all but one continent, and they're known to travel long distances throughout their lifetimes. When these ospreys do migrate, they return to the same area each year, and some even return to the same nests. In these nests, they often keep the same partner, and these partners will mate for life. Ospreys build relatively large nests, and these nests are often built on man-made structures. These structures are usually in the perfect location for these ospreys, and most of the work is already done for them. Although the osprey has quite a healthy population in North America today, just like many other birds of prey in the 50s and 60s, it was affected by DDT. This pesticide thins their eggshells and killed many birds across the continent. Luckily, their conservation in the US has been a success, and you are able to see these majestic birds across North America today. As the osprey is such a large and well-known bird, I'm sure the fact that they mostly feed on fish won't shock you. These birds truly are expert fish hunters, and tend to spot targets from a perch or on the wing, before swooping down and taking them out. These birds can carry surprisingly large fish through the air, and some have even been known to carry large pike. When it comes to choosing fish to eat, the osprey is not very picky. It will target both freshwater and saltwater fish, and has even been observed preying on small sharks. Most birds of prey feed on a wide variety of foods, but this is definitely not the case with the osprey. Although it will sometimes feed on small mammals when fish are scarce, on average 99% of its diet is made up of fish. This really does prove that these birds are so good at hunting fish they'd rather do nothing else, and instead of being picky they are just very well adapted. But for our next group of birds, once again we can head to multiple places around the world, 
as we will be focusing on the crossbills. Now, crossbill is not a species of bird, but it is instead a genus. Birds in this genus are in the finch family, and there are six species. Although each of the species in this genus differ in size and colour, the adult males tend to be a red or orange colour, and the females are generally green or yellow. When you take a close look at this bird, you may notice something strange, because just like their name suggests, they do have crossed bills. This isn't the result of an accident or some kind of overbite, but instead it's a very useful adaptation. Although these birds can be found in quite a few different ecosystems, they're almost always found near healthy forests. That's because these crossbills are specialist feeders, and they tend to target conifer cones. For most birds, it can be quite hard to extract seeds from these cones, but the crossbill's strange beak helps them do so. This bird's adaptation doesn't only mean that it can feed on the seeds more easily, but it also means that it can get at seeds that no other birds can. When times are hard, these birds only need to compete with themselves, but of course they can be heavily affected by deforestation. So even though this bird may look strange, it has a very useful adaptation, and they are also quite pretty birds as well. Before our final species, we will be heading to Sub-Saharan Africa, as the bird we will be taking a look at is the palm nut vulture. This bird is quite a large and bulky bird of prey, and it also has quite a confusing name. Vultures are famously meat eaters, and the majority of their diet consists of carrion. The palm nut is obviously not an animal, yet this bird does feed on them. When you take a look at this bird's head, you'll notice that it's quite different to most other vultures. Vultures mostly have a bald head, and this is so that they can put their head inside of carcasses without soiling their feathers. The palm nut vulture still has quite a lot of feathers on its head, and this means that it's not great at sticking its head inside of carcasses. Instead, it can sometimes be seen feeding on small dead animals, and it also sometimes targets fish and small reptiles. These really are quite normal food items for a vulture, but it does also feed on something else that makes it truly unique. This vulture mostly feeds on the fleshy fruit husks of the oil palm, and on the palm fruits of the raffia palm. These fruits make up around 60% of the adult bird's diet, and around 90% of the juvenile bird's diet. This is extremely unusual for a bird of prey, but it seems to have worked out for this interesting bird. Because the palm nut vulture isn't as picky as the other birds on this list, it does appear to be less vulnerable. If it can't find any palm fruits, it can easily change its diet, but they do prefer to have a mostly plant-based diet. So even though this species may look like your typical bird of prey, it's really not your average vulture. There really are quite a lot of birds that are specialist feeders, and you can find these types of birds all over the world. No matter what ecosystem you look at, you will find some specialised birds, and also birds that only feed on one type of food. There are of course small and colourful hummingbirds that will only feed on nectar, and large and elegant flamingos that will only feed on small crustaceans. If you know of any other specialised birds that only feed on one type of food, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.